Hi, and welcome to this lecture on service design personas. First, let me start off with explaining what a persona is. Personas are fictional characters that a designer creates with qualitative and quantitative data. Their aim is to represent the different user that might use a company's uh, service, product, site or brand in a similar way. Personas will often represent customers, but they can also cover other groups uh, such as employees, internal users, um, technology suppliers, uh, government officials, uh, etc. It's important to understand that a service design persona is based on actual research and is not a representation of a stereotype. Personas are also different from your typical marketing segments, which are often based on only demographics. A persona goes further than that. They are fictional characters that express the needs, the wants and the behavioral patterns of a company's customers. In order to master personas, we will go over the following topics. The persona building blocks, the four types of personas, how to create a persona in six easy steps, and also check out uh, a case in point for my professional experience and finishing off with some key takeaways. But before we dive into these lectures, let us first be critical and ask ourselves why is there uh, a need for a persona in the first place? And the first reason is that it helps service designers to get a better understanding of the customer needs, behaviors and goals. This is needed in order to solve customer pains in a consistent and targeted manner. Next, it helps service designers to build empathy with their target groups. Empathy will enable us to make design decisions that are in the interest of our users. In some companies, personas have been embedded so much that all employees know what exactly, exactly who the, the customer is by simply hearing the name of the persona. It also makes the design task less complex as personas guide the ideation process and it helps to achieve the goal of creating a good user experience in general. For instance, I have often used personas during brainstorming sessions to guide participants into coming up with ideas that are in line with the persona's characteristics. Another reason is that service designers can engage with personas to test and challenge their assumptions. It helps them to ask the right questions and answer those questions in line with the target users. For example, how would John, Mark and Duncan experience, react and behave in relation to feature X or change Y within the given context? And what do John, Mark and Duncan uh, think, feel, do and say? And what are their underlying needs that we are trying to fulfill? Doing this makes discussions a lot more tangible, don't you think? Um, and finally, personas are a way to make our research results more actionable by making them personal. So instead of just showing demographic data, we will take that data and apply it to our personas. This will make it easier to share the data to the rest of the design team and the organization as a whole. Let's now go over the different building blocks of what constitutes a persona. See you in the next lecture.